Just a couple other types of symmetry to go over in this lesson. Um, the first of those two is called plane symmetry. Uh, plane symmetry literally gives the effect of looking into a mirror. It's kind of like how we would reflect a point over a line of reflection, uh, but now we're actually going to be taking a three-dimensional figure and reflecting the entire thing by using a two-dimensional figure, or a plane, as a mirror. Uh, let me see if a picture can maybe make that a little more clear. Let's look at it backwards. This is actually the reflected image. Let's see where we would have to put the plane of reflection in order to make this our resulting reflected image. Uh, so if you take a plane, here it comes, it's going to come chop this thing right down the middle there. Now what you have are two distinct boxes. And the first box is really looking into that plane as if looking into a mirror and seeing the other box on the other side. Box as a whole, the big box as a whole, has what we would call plane symmetry because there is somewhere in, on that big box image where you could slide a mirror and have it look the same. So there, for every point on one side of the of the box, there would be a corresponding point that's reflected across that plane. Same thing if we have this blue point here on this side of the, the plane of reflection, we'd have a corresponding point on the other side. Same with that critter and that critter. Uh, the other type of symmetry that we want to take a look at in this lesson is known as axis symmetry. Axis symmetry says if you can take a three-dimensional figure, um, and rotate it about a line for less than 360 degrees, and at some point have that resulting figure map onto the original figure, then the object has axis symmetry. This is a little bit like ro rotational symmetry was. Rotational symmetry, though, focused on rotating about a point. Here we're going to be rotating about a line called an axis. For instance, let's look at this backwards. Let's say this vertical line here is going to be our axis of rotation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some figure on the left side like that, and I'm going to spin this figure around the axis of revolution. In doing so, this red quadrilateral would come spinning out of the screen at me, uh, head over to the other side, and then go into the computer screen and, and make a full 360 degree rotation. And in the end, you'd have a three-dimensional figure, uh, if you use your imagination, kind of looks like an upside-down lampshade. Uh, that was the best I could do with that. But this lampshade, as a three-dimensional figure, would have what they call rotational symmetry. This axis that, that goes through it, if you can imagine that being in the very middle of the lampshade, this axis that goes through it would be the axis of symmetry.